uh, and Melissa with uh, Oshkosh Y, and uh, we're going to get started with the little flatties again. <clears throat> As typical, we're going to just uh, start on our back, getting in tune with our spine, paying attention to neutral spine and natural arch in that lower back. Knees are bent, feet flat on the ground. Fingertips down. Drop the shoulders away from the ears. Drop down into your body as you feel your breaths. Inhale through the nose. Rib cage comes out to the side. Neutral spine, natural arch in that lower back. As we exhale, imprint that lower back on the mat. Pelvic tilt. Inhale, <clears throat> returning back to neutral spine, and exhale, imprint that lower back. A couple more pelvic tilts just to get warmed up. Feel where your breaths are, how they control the core. Neutral spine, inhale. And exhale, imprint. Let's hold that imprint down. Start to lift that tailbone up and curl one vertebrae at a time off the mat, coming into bridge pose. Let's hold our bridge so that the foundations are the shoulders and the soles of the feet. No tension or stress on the head or the neck. <clears throat> to engage your glutes. You don't need to squeeze the glutes together, the butt cheeks together, as much as it just lifting the hips engages the whole backside. Try not to let the knees splay apart first. Let's walk those shoulder blades in towards the spine. If you can, grasping the hands underneath you and reaching those hands towards those heels. Again, drawing the shoulder blades down the spine, but still feeling a strong foundation in the shoulders. Nice stretch. When we're ready, release those hands, walk the shoulder blades back out, and take that right leg and cross the right ankle over the left knee. Now try not to let the hips dip. It's kind of like tree pose with a rest or a glute stretch, but just opening those hips up. A couple breaths there. Right leg down. Lift those hips if they drop and cross that left leg. Left ankle over the right knee, open the hips, hold the hips up, hold the bridge as we inhale. And exhale. One more breath. And exhale. Left leg back on the ground, lift those hips. Make sure those shoulders are open. Inhale. And as you exhale, curl the rib cage towards the hip bones as you slowly lower each vertebrae at a time. Paying attention to that lower back landing before the hips. And then recognizing as the tailbone gravitates down, you return back into that neutral spine. The bridge reoccurs in the back. Inhale. And exhale, pull that navel in, first the pelvic tilt, and then just flow right into the bridge as you take time with spinal articulation, lifting and holding. All right, let's bring that right leg straight up to the sky. Let's flex that foot so you feel that power and that stretch through the backs of the legs. Press through the heel, flat foot, and make some footprints on the clouds as you dip the hips and lift. Two, three, four, and hold that one for five, four, three, two, one. Lower that, lift the hips, extend the left, flex the foot, and dip. And exhale, lift and press that foot into the clouds for a footprint. Nice and high. Three, four, and hold it up for five, four, 
three, two, one. Lower the left, lift the hips, hold that bridge. Mindfulness to the spinal articulation as we inhale. And exhale, curl the rib cage towards the hip bones. Feel like a string of pearls landing slowly on the ground. Opening back up into neutral spine for our third and final bridge. Inhale. And exhale, imprint that lower back on the mat. Feel that pelvic tilt. Follow it into bridge. Find a nice foundation again in the soles of the feet and the shoulders. Let's bring that leg straight up. Right leg, flex the foot, lead with the heel on the way down and with energy on the way up. Exhale, lift, inhale, lower. Point, heel leads and point up. Three, four, and five. You place that right, lift the hips, hold that bridge, extend the left leg to the sky, leading with the heel as we lower. Exhale, point. Last one. Lower that left. Lift that bridge, hold that bridge like it's the first bridge you're doing. Give a nice rejuvenating breath. In through the nose. And take your time with that exhale on the way down. Connect. Fully dropping into your body, feeling the contact with the mat progressively. And extend those legs, extend those arms. Take it out to an X position on your mat. Take your time and lengthen those limbs out to the four corners. Noticing when you're lengthening that you're also lengthening not just the limbs as you're reaching, but those spinal extensors running down both sides of your spine. All right, we're gonna just do the X formation and a good question was asked, is your lower back not on the mat until you touch that toe? And that's accurate, but that doesn't mean the act activation of the core doesn't start earlier. So as we inhale, exhale, pull that navel in and then lift the hand and leg, opposite arm, opposite leg, and then bring it down. Lower back only flattening at the top. Opposite arm, opposite leg, exhale, and inhale down. So activation occurs before you even lift it off the ground. And there's your awareness so that lower back flattens once you touch. Remember the lengthening of this move as well. Don't underestimate the power of long, lean muscles. They don't need to be short and bulky and big. We can lengthen them and they'll serve us good for range of motion, mobility, posture. Starting from the core. Let's do one more each side. All right, and then we're going to bring our limbs parallel with the body. Left hand is behind the head. This is uh, relatively easy crunches to start warming up for a little more uh, challenging set. So as we extend our right arm and right leg, we're going to exhale and crunch in the center. More advanced, if you'd like to make this more difficult, you can hover the left leg that's straight on the ground. But I do promise you that we'll increase this to a more challenging ab work. So feel free to give yourself the warm up in this position as well. Exhale, crunch. Inhale, lengthen, reach long.
Two more. And last one. Same thing to the, on the other side, so that right hand can support that head. Left arm, left leg extends, and exhale, crunch it to the center. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale. Good, keep it going. Here's seven. Two more. Nine. And ten. Good, now we're going to switch sides again. But this time we're going to bring that right elbow, right knee out to the side. Okay, out to the side of your hip. So nothing in this. It's almost in the same plane as your body. So. Left hand can support that head, exhale, crunch it. And I'd like you to focus on trying to bring the knee as high as possible because for the next set, you'll recognize that's ultimately what we're doing. We're not crunching with the upper body. Knee to elbow. Lengthen, inhale, exhale, crunch. Five down, five to go. And two more, out to the side. And crunch, switching it over to the other side. Left arm, left knee, draws up to the left elbow, extend, inhale, lengthen as it's as if it's equally as important as the crunch, as the work. Exhale, crunch, here's seven. Keep it going out to the side. Again, not terribly hard, but effective. Last one. All right. Both fingertips behind the head, elbows wide, bringing those leggy legs into frog stance. Heels can be together, toes are apart. It's not necessarily really important, but that the heels are together, knees are wide. <clears throat> I want you to elevate as if you're doing a chest press and you're doing that the entire time. Now recognize the pivot is going to be from the lower half. The elbow shouldn't have to bring it down to crunch. We're going to bring the knees to the elbows as we exhale and then take it over to the other side. So alternating right and left side. Really pivoting from the lower torso. If you need to, you can add a little bit of that crunch from the upper body, but don't make it your main goal. Just make it to modify if you want to touch. Try to give yourself that goal. Knees are drawn to the elbows, not the elbows drawn to the knees. There's five, four, three, two, last one each side. Lay those legs down in that froggy stance or butterfly stretch, rest the head. Open those arms out like airplane wings. Allow your hips to open up a little bit, maybe on a rack left to right, loosen it up. Be 
you'd like to grab a drink, uh, we're going to go right into our next ab series, which will be a little more challenging. So a quick drink. We're going to bring it right back down where we were. Oh, let me think. All right. Let me move my singing bowl in case it's in the way. Okay. <clears throat> we'll start with a butterfly crunch in the middle. We're going to be doing th sets of three, three in the middle, three on each side, uh, three in the middle always as we rotate sides. Remember, you can just come over to your side, extend that arm, um, but we're hovering the legs on the side. All right, fingertips behind the head, elbows wide, and we're going to crunch the elbows to the knees together with a crunch as we exhale for one, exhale two, and three. Right arm extends, rolling to the right and opening and closing the clams as we elevate our legs, hover them over the ground, two, and three. There we go, back to center, same thing. Inhale. Exhale, crunch, elbows to knees. You can lower and do a heel tap with those knees wide if you like. Make it a little harder. Left leg, arm extends, roll to the left side and open and close that clamp for three, two, and one. Bring it back, center. Again, exhale, starting set two, or not set two, second and first set. Three. Roll it to the right for clams. One, two, and three. In the middle. Roll it to that left arm extends and open and close for three, two, one. Back to center, third set. Right side, open and close for three, two, and one. Center. Left side, open and close for three, two, and one. Bring those knees together for the second part of the series. Heel tap, knees together, exhale, elbows stay wide. For three, two, and one. As we roll to that right, we're going to extend and crunch knees to the elbow. For one, two, and three. Back to center, knees together. Heel tap, exhale, crunch. Legs stay at a 90 degree. And crunch. Left arm, extend, and bring the knee to the elbow for two, and three, and heel tap, legs together, right arm extends, and crunch for three. To center. And extend and crunch on the left side. Three, two, third set in the second series. Right side. Extend. Back in the middle, heel tap. Exhale. Left arm. And three. All right, third set in the series. All right, walk down the mat there. 
is straight arm or straight legs in the center. Protect your lower back if you need it. Um, more advanced, you can come up here for a chest press and then roll to the sides. I need lower back support, so I give it to myself. Lower in the center, straight legs, exhale lift. Here's two. And three. Right arm out to the side. Straight leg lifts up to the side for three. And one, back to the center, straight legs. Left arm extends, straight legs from the side, lifting. Uh, beginners, if you need to modify, just leave that bottom leg on the ground and lift that top leg. And then in the middle, Bend those knees back at a 90 degree, or just choose to lift and lower one leg at a time. Right side, right arm, straight legs. In the middle. Let's slow it down so we don't start using momentum as we get tired. Left side. Center, slow it down. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Number three. Right arm extends, and left. Third set going in here. In the center. Left side, almost done. Remember, maybe you'll only use the top leg. Perfectly fine. And three, for good measure, one more in the middle. Take your time. Oh, bring it in. And relax. We'll come back in just a moment. Let's take it on our belly and work our back. Uh, spinal extensors went in down both sides of the spine. So as you lower yourself down, extend those arms, extend those legs. We'll just start with swimmer first. <clears throat> as we lift that right arm and left leg, we'll switch to the left arm and right leg. And as we do so, we want to keep our head in line with our spine. <clears throat> and our goal isn't so much how high we can lift our limbs as it is keeping our core of our body stable as the limbs move. And then also thinking about lengthening those limbs as you reach out from the fingertips to the toes, lengthening. And as you do so and advance, you can hover those limbs. <clears throat> But as you place the limbs back on the ground, work your way out to the corners of your mat. Slowly, take a couple reps to get there. And then continue with the swimmer in the X position and recognize that this is a little more leverage for your core to hold. You're feeling it. Beginners, you can always go back <clears throat> in line with the spine, parallel with the spine. Again, lengthen as you lift. Let's take it for five more. Connecting your breaths, fueling your core. Last one each side. And then we're going to bring that, the fingertips
grips behind the head. If you need to, release quickly back, or not quickly, take your time, whatever you need. But uh, child's pose might be calling for some of you. Then we're going to bring our fingertips behind our head. Elbows remain wide for our reverse crunches. We'll take it up to the center. And exhale lower. Take it over to one side. Exhale lower. Take it over, I mean, up to center again. And then back over to the other side. And that's the rhythm. Inhale, center. Side. Back to center. And side. Good. As you increase your awareness on this move, take time to feel which muscles are engaged to do the lifting. Last set. And stack your hands. Wag your tails. Loosen up those hips. And ready, when you're ready, palms underneath your shoulders. Elbows tucked into your side, not wide out here. Chicken arms. Open those knees. And use those triceps to push up and push back into child's pose. Let your hips sink into the heels of your feet. Let yourself feel a deep stretch through the spine and opening up space in the lower lumbar. And connect with your breath as you do so, with a full inhale through the nose, and exhale, release it. Good. We're going to take it into planks, do a little more back work, double up your mat if you need to, give yourself the cushion on the elbows. Taking it into a bent arm plank, front plank, nice straight line from head to heels. Try not to bring your hips up like a peak of a roof. Level it out to keep your head in line with your spine. Elbows should be directly underneath your shoulders. Pull that navel into the spine, engage the core without lifting the hips, and push back into the heels of the feet. Feel the breath as you inhale, rib cage comes out east to west. And exhale, pull that navel in. Hold a nice plank position. Couple breaths here. And take it to hip dips to the side. So you lower one hip over to the right and to the left. Feeling that pivot from the hips. Two more each side. Good, bring it back center. Replace those elbows with the palms as you come into straight arm. Straight arm plank can also be modified with the bent knee. Just don't bend at the hips. Still checking your form, making sure that the shoulder blades aren't sinking in towards the spine. Keep them wide. 
bring that head in line with the spine. And let's take three breaths. Inhale. Exhale, feel the energy. Feel the renewal. Number two, inhale. Release. Last breath. And with this release, exhale and draw the hips to the sky. Oh, goose, it's okay. All right, and from down dog, you'd like to take it into up dog if you like to go into child's pose. Release it, or whatever serves you best. Listen to your body. Take time for your stretch, and then we'll get in position for genie tilts. Just like your elbows during planks, um, you want to give yourself a little extra support underneath the the joints. So when you get into position for genie tilts, we'll do a right knee bent first since my mat. Hold on here. There we go. All right, right knee is on the mat. Left leg is extended. We're gonna warm it up with uh, windmills as we extend it over and reach. Find your range of motion here. Focusing on the range of motion on the bent knee side as you tip it over nice and deep because that's where we're going to do our work. Last one. And back to center. Holding those arms like a genie. Tilting over to the bent knee side like a teapot. You're pouring out, pouring out, pouring out. Keep going, keep going, and then pause. Exhale, start to lift from the waist, waistline only, then up to the rib cage, and then the shoulders and the head are the last to come up. Tip it over, all the way over, and then lift from the waist. Exhale, fuel to this muscle group right there, and then lift. Exhale, tip it all the way over, and lift from the waist. All waist and last shoulders and head. Good, a couple more. Five more, but if you'd like more advanced, arms above the head. Creating, again, more leverage for that core, for those obliques to lift from the waistline. And tip it over, all the way to the side, and lift from the waist. Breath. Good. Two more. If you need to bring it back into genie arms, it's going to be a little easier. Last one. And then reach it all the way over to that straight leg side for a stretch. And then we'll switch to the other knee. So that right leg will extend. Left knee on the mat. Starting with that range of motion for the windmill. As we bring it overhead, arm comes overhead, other arm scoops like a cradle underneath. Remember range of motion on that bent knee side. 
and then stretch out on that straight leg side what you just worked. Good. When you're feeling stretched out and ready to go, bring it back up upright. Arms crossed, tipping over to the bent knee side, all the way over, all the way over to the last drop, and then lift from the waist. Obliques should be lifting here. Last thing is the shoulders and then the head. Don't start with that. You can drop with the head and lift with the waist. Waist, ribs, shoulders, and then head. Five more. If you choose, the last five, a little more advanced. Arms above. Remember, do not initiate drawing up with the head and shoulders. Feel it in the obliques. Last one. Reach it all the way over to the straight leg side. When you're there, stretching it out. And feeling that the effectiveness that move. Uh, before I leave you on this uh, segment, we're going to do some crossovers and then stretches. So bring it back on your back. Most of you guys know crossovers, uh, beginners. We have to tilt this again. Sorry. Um, beginners, you can always use the option of keeping your feet on the ground and lifting the knees as we cross over, opposite elbow to opposite knee. Otherwise, we're bringing our legs up in a 90 degree. Our twist is from the torso. We're not shifting our weight from left to right here. We're not shifting into the hips. Twisting from the torso, fingers just behind the head. Elbows remain wide. And exhale, right elbow to left knee as that right leg extends. And cross. Here's two. Don't rush it. And cross. Here's three. And cross. Slow it down so that you're very mindful of the twist coming in through the torso. Here's five. We're going to hold here. We're going to check our form. We're going to check that our elbows remain wide and that we're not crunching in through here. We're checking that we're not shifting our weight over to one hip and let's cross over to the other side and hold and check that same form lengthening that long leg let's get back to work there's six but don't pick up the pace too much cross and seven cross eight <clears throat> cross nine Cross. We're going to hold on 10 with a straight leg lift. Modification. Put that foot of the left foot on the ground as you lower and lift. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. One more. And cross it over to the other side. Straight leg lift. Last one, continuing into crossovers if you can. Here's 11, <clears throat> and cross, 12, 
cross, 13, cross, 14, cross, 15, hold with the reach and pulse for five. Get that shoulder blade off the mat a little higher. Three, two, and one. Cross and hold, reach and pulse for five. Four, three, two, last set of five. Here we go. Here's 16, cross. Get your breath to your core. Fuel your energy, slow it down. Here's 18, and cross. 19, and cross. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Cross and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Bring those knees in at a 90 degree. Lower that head. Open those arms up like airplane wings. For supine twist as we stretch it out. Draw those knees to the right as you keep the left shoulder blade on the mat and look over the left shoulder. You can just rest those knees on the ground there or you could be hovering. As you exhale to bring those knees center, come back to the start and then lower those knees to the left, looking over that right shoulder and keeping the right shoulder blade on the mat. And again, exhale, think about drawing your rib cage together to initiate the move from the abs and then bring the knees center. And then inhale, lower to the right. <clears throat> and again, exhale, draw the rib cage together. And lower left. Bring it back center. Got one more stretch for you to uh, finish it off. I'm gonna sit straight up. Kind of like a, a getting into the saw position, but without doing the saw, what we're gonna work on here is some internal and external hip rotations. And then also uh, the rotator's cuff. We get a little bit of those, but uh, oh, make sure you're sitting up on those sit bones. Sit up straight, abs engage, pull the navel in, and you go ahead and curl both toes in towards the center, kind of following with the hands and then inhale, bring both toes out and open those palms up to the sky. Exhale. Inhale. Good, find your rhythm and do a couple of those. Two. Last one, we're gonna open it up. We're gonna bring those arms out um, like airplane wings, but go ahead and keep those toes tilted out so those hips are rotated open. And shoulder rolls, different shoulder rolls, uh, rotator cuff rolls maybe. So turning those palms, uh, thumbs. Think about your thumbs pointing to the ground and palm, thumbs pointing back behind you. So we're in about three fourths away around a circle. You're leading with the thumbs. What are your toes doing? Pointed out, hopefully. Two. And last one, bring it in. And go ahead and bring it in to a butterfly stretch. Keeping a flat back. And bringing your chest to your feet. And if you want to, use those elbows to press those knees down a little wider. And slow down your breath, slow down your mind, and take a moment for gratitude. 